Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. I'm Kevin D. My video is by Kevin D, of course. But hey guys, I want to show you something, and I don't know if anybody else has encountered this issue or not, but I just recently relocated um, these four 100 watt Harbor Freight solar panels from my shed. They were on the roof of my shed, and I pulled them down because I was having some issues. Didn't know what the issues were, but I'll get to that in here in a second. These two are 200 watt Renogy panels. This is all held together by these this L brackets, L channels. I got it from Lowe's. You can see that's got a bunch of holes in it. I took a grinder, grinded it off to make it flat right there. And it's just screwed in. This is all a temporary system until my solar monitoring system comes in that tracks the sun. But I got a couple other projects ahead of that. One being I gotta move the fence back and a couple other things before I can get that permanent solar monitoring system and put it in the ground here anyways these are the 100 watt thunderbolt solar panels from harbor freight let me walk you to the back here and i want to show you exactly what's going on if you've seen my youtube short that i put out a couple weeks ago well maybe a week ago i kind of talked about it because that was the day that it, i discovered the problem and basically what happened was the wires that are attached to the solar panel shorted out on me and the reason being it's no fault to the manufacturer it's completely my fault the reason being is because they were exposed to the sun as you can see right here this is supposed to be a red wire now it's like a light white pink and it was in the sun the whole time my fix to my fix to that i'm getting some of this tubing and put on here i'll bring you along and show you the package here in a minute that it comes in I started running it over here this morning and I'll eventually fix it all. I'll tape it up somehow or another to keep it out of the sun, keep the exposure down. So what happened was this wire had become so brittle from sitting in the sun that I had a thunderstorm roll in. And when the thunderstorm rolled in, it got into the cracks and exposed the wiring that was showing in the crack, which I didn't know this. And when it did so, the water made contact with the roof shed and it shorted the system out. Grounded it out, shorted it out, whatever you want to call it. And I did have an earth ground that comes off the side of the shed from the panels. And I think that might have prevented the fire or whatever else. I don't know. I'm not an electrician, nor do I pretend to be one. I just like messing with this solar stuff and it gives me something to do as a retiree. So anyways, the wires that were exposed to the sun were just baked for the last year and a half that the panels have been up there. Between the metal roof and the wiring and the sun, they just discolored the wires. Here's another example of it. I checked, this does not show any of the copper wire in there. So it's still good to go. I still need to cover it up. But that's basically what happened. Um, the sun had got into it really bad, the parts that were exposed, and it grounded the system out. So I was frustrated, I pulled all the panels down I put some silicone inside the holes and silicone the roof up real good. I pulled it down and I finally went through, I didn't finally, I went through every single wire to figure out what was going on because everything was mounted in series. So I started doing each individual panel and I was like, well, I'm getting power. I don't understand what's going on here, but that little bitty crack, just a minute crack and the water hitting it and making contact with the metal shed is what ruined my system. It didn't ruin it. It was just, I had a faulty system at the time. So I pulled everything down, went through it, and this is where I'm at now. I figured it out. I replaced, I cut that piece of wire off, replaced the connector, and here's where I'm at now with a temporary system that'll probably last me through this winter, or if I get motivated and push the fence back between now and then, but I don't see that happening. I got other things I wanna do besides messing with the fence. So anyways, the two 200 watt Venegies power my Opus, oops, right here. And I just got that for emergency purposes and everything. It's a Mega 3. If anybody's smart out there, tell me how to shut this off light. How do you shut that off light on? It says off all the time. It kind of bugs me. I don't want it on. But here is the bag. I got this stuff from Harbor Freight. It's made by Chicago Electric. It's half inch by seven foot protective wire wrap. So if you're like me and you have your PV wires, your solar panel wires attached in a configuration where the sun 
can hit them, then I would suggest you wrap them up or do something so they're not exposed to the sun because you can ultimately um, have the same mistake I did. And once again, that was all my fault. It's not a ding on Harbor Freight or Thunderbolt panels. It's completely my fault. I didn't realize that that wire couldn't be exposed to the sun, nor did I think about the heat between the metal roof, the wiring, and the sun. And that's completely all my fault. The wiring that was underneath the panels is all good. But the couple connections that was connected to the main line coming into the shed is where the fault had it happened at. So do yourself a favor, wrap those wires up, protect them the best way you can, and go from there. But other than that, guys, my system's working flawlessly. I'll show it to you one more time. The four Harbor Freight panels coming over here, comes over here to my breaker. Uh, that's a 30 amp break. I can't remember. Don't. I won't say anything. It's a breaker. I can shut it off, turn it on, let the wire, let the solar charge up my uh, Victron 150 over 35 which I love this thing because of the Bluetooth I can go on my porch and I can monitor it and see exactly what's going on with it There's the light time battery. I upgraded from the ampere time battery, which was the old company name It goes into my shunt shunt powers the battery monitor. Here's the battery monitor I originally thought I was having issues with the battery monitor. It turned out to be the old light time charge controller. It got hot, overheated out here on this 100, 120 degree shed, and it ruined it. That was my fault. I didn't know. I would have had my ceiling fan on more or some way to cool this shop. And here's the inverter. It's made by light time. It's a 1,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I will have the links for everything in the description. Um, for anybody that's new, all my system does is power my TV, power my battery chargers right there. Um, it powers my ceiling fan. That's what this cable's for. It shuts off at 7 p.m. all every night with the with the electric shut off there. I got a USB line. It goes to my little fan right here whenever I need it. There's my fan and this um, ceiling fan. There's my stereo. And then whenever I need to, I trickle charge my four-wheelers and my... Um, my lawn tractor using the solar setup and it all works fine what i'm getting at is you don't need to spend thousands of dollars if you only need a small setup like i have but just be aware that if you have those wires exposed to the sun find some way to wrap them up and not have them exposed to the sun i guess that's what i'm trying to say anyways guys thanks for watching thanks for taking your time out of your day and may god bless you all have a, have a wonderful day until next time bye